four years of evidence and £150 million of public money so far. So what have we learned from the ongoing Grenfell Tower inquiry? Well, announced in the immediate aftermath of the fire that killed 72 people, it was formally set up in August 2017. Phase one, which covered the events of the night, reported in October 2019. Phase two, looking at causes, has been held up by COVID delays and is now not expected to report until at least next year. But we've already learned a lot already and the failings are widespread. First, the cladding. Through staff testimonies and emails, several firms involved in building and fitting the panels that wrapped around Grenfell Tower knew the fire risk. Take one email submitted to the inquiry by a cladding manager talking about the type of material used in the panels, known as ACM. As we all know, the ACM will be gone rather quickly in a fire. Combustible materials had also been packed around the windows. Next, inconsistencies in fire safety tests. The insulation had non-combustible material added for testing and then a more flammable version used on the tower block. Shoddy workmanship and cost cutting also contributed to poor fire safety management with fire barriers installed incorrectly. The government also missed learnings from previous tragedies. Eight years before Grenfell Tower, six people died in a fire at Lakenhall House in South London. Another block wrapped in cladding. Finally, the emergency response. Individual firefighters have been commended for their bravery, but on a systemic level, there was a collapse in communication, a lack of equipment and specific training. Most controversial of all was the stay put advice issued to residents, although the government has recently confirmed it is keeping the policy. Well, the head of London Fire Brigade caused huge upset and later quit when she told the inquiry she wouldn't change the brigade's response on the night. The inquiry can sometimes feel like a game of passing the buck, but the Met Police have confirmed that no criminal charges, including charges such as corporate manslaughter, will be brought until after the final phase of the inquiry concludes. And although government figures show 94% of high-rise buildings identified have the same cladding as Grenfell Tower, have completed work or started work to remove it, unsafe homes do remain, and these are concentrated in Greater Manchester and London. And whilst many questions remain over the risk of medium rise and substantial smaller residential buildings. So no criminal charges and thousands of people across the country still living in houses with unsafe cladding.